Welcome back. I'm Gus, I'm an editor and animator and a visual effects artist. Welcome to episode 7 of Brick Film School, the series where I teach you how to get started on your filmmaking journey. Today I'll be talking about working with blue and green screens in film and specifically in LEGO animation. Today is part 2 of a two-part series on green screens. This will be a look into the technical side of things, so if you want even more knowledge on this subject, be sure to check out part 1 after this video. If you enjoy or learn anything from this video, click the like button and consider subscribing. I upload every single week, and you're not going to want to miss it. Also, if you missed my last animation, Stormtrooper Sharpshooter, I released that last week. I put a lot of work into it, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. Now, being that we had some clarification questions last week, I figured that we'd start this week's video with the Q&A rather than doing it at the end of the video. So, it's time for the Q&A portion of this video coming at you live from your local Instagram. How do you key out green reflections on a minifigure without ruining the minifigure? So basically you just use masks to correct any of those errors. If you have a lot of reflections on your figure, you would just, you know, key it as you usually would. It'll key out the bits you don't want it to, and then you have to add the other bits back in. I'll show you how to do this later in this video. How do I keep the green screen from becoming too bright, but keep the set and minifigs well lit? So you would want to just make sure your green screen light and your character light are separate. And basically how you can do this, if you're having trouble making your lights shine separately on those, you can focus your lights more by using tin foil. Tape the tin foil to the light and you can make it more focused on what you want it to focus on uh, by creating a cone around it or just putting a side on it. Uh, anything like that will help you get the light where you want it to go. That way your green screen light and your character light will be separate. How to make the background a green screen. I think this is for uh, the phone. You just go to Google, look up green screen, then you download the picture, take a screenshot, and then that's your green screen. And then basically you just want to make sure your phone stays on, go into your uh, display settings, turn auto lock off, and then you plug in your phone or tablet. That will make it so your green screen stays on and won't turn off. And that will do it for the Q&A portion of this video. If you want to be a part of the next one, follow me on Instagram. Camera settings. I'll do a video in the future specifically focused on cameras, but today I just want to give you some settings and tips on how to set your camera for chroma keying. I'll be using the Canon DSLR T6i for, this, uh, for these examples, but any camera with manual settings should be able to do this. And in case you're curious, the Canon T series, you know, the T2i through T7i, uh, those are all standard cameras for animators. Most people use them, they're relatively affordable and have great quality. So if you are starting to look into DSLR specifically for animation, I recommend starting there. So to jump into the green screen side of things, for live action it would be a little different, like your shutter speed might want to be faster so there's less motion blur, that way you get a better key. But while focusing on animation, it's kind of the opposite. You're going to want to reduce your shutter speed and increase your f-stop which will basically give you more depth of field. It'll get rid of those soft edges that you get on your characters. This will basically be to just give you a nicer key. You don't want fuzzy edges with a green screen or it'll be a nightmare. I can't give you specific numbers for your scenario. It's a completely case-by-case -case basis, as always. What I can tell you is you usually want your character to be completely in focus, no soft edges, but you still want your green screen that should be set back from your characters to be slightly out of focus. Um, that way, It'll smooth out any wrinkles or dust or anything like that, and it'll just it'll be easier for you in the computer later. So it's a delicate balance. You just have to give it a go, and the more practice you get with it, you'll kind of have it more second nature in terms of what settings you'll use and what will be the easiest to work with in the computer. Also, as we're jumping into the computer, I'll show you how to bring back those soft edges if that's the look you're going for. How to key. For this portion of the video, we'll be jumping into the computer. I'll be sharing my process, so we'll be working in Adobe After Effects. For those of you who may not have After Effects, uh, HitFilm is a great program to start with. It's free, and a lot of animators that I know use it and have used it to get started. The tips and tricks I'll be showing here are not exclusive to After Effects. There's always one way or another to translate the tricks I use to other programs. Chroma keying is not an exact science by any means. A lot of the work is uh, basically fidgeting around with your program until it gives you a result that you're happy with. So all that being said, let's get to it. Okay, welcome to computer land. We're going to do our best to show you my process when it comes to green screen or chroma keying. This is typically what you end up with. It's very hard to get a good green screen background and it's more typical than not that you're working with a less than ideal situation. 
basically nothing in this scene moves. Spider-Man turns his head, so not too much movement happening here. So the green screen is really in place for Spider-Man's head and any kind of assistance I can get for the other animals. I wasn't really thinking too much about the best way to do this. It was just like, okay, I need to get this element. I smacked everything down on the table, took it, and then I'm working with this. So let's start by getting our green screen effect, which is key light. So key light 1.0. We'll pick this color and you'll see it looks awful. We'll try to pick right next to his head. It doesn't look quite right, looks quite terrible. So to remedy this problem, we're gonna try a few different things. I'm gonna reset that one more time, and then I'm going to go over here and type in saturation. Saturation, so I'll get hue and saturation right there. Move that above key light. I'm gonna crank the saturation up a little bit. It just makes the background a little bit more green. All right, and you can see right there, we're already getting a better starting point. You can play with these basic values to start messing around. Um, if you want to get a little bit more specific, you can go into screen mat right here. So you can see here the element we want to key, which is Spider-Man, because he's the only one moving in this piece of animation. His key looks decent. And it's working for the background we have, which is just going to be a white sky. And I'm going to show you ways to correct some issues we're having. First, you'll see that around the frame, you know, our, the key isn't working and we don't need any of that frame. So we're just going to start by uh, masking all that out. So you'll see that our color is all wrong, which for this, you could duplicate the uh, saturation filter. That's command D or control D if you're on a PC. Let's bring that back down. Just make sure it is after your chroma key effect. Um, there are a bunch of different ways. I'm not going to get too much into color right now. The important thing we're looking at next is just how we're seeing through things. We're seeing through certain characters. If your green screen is ever keying anything you don't want to be keyed, this is kind of how you remedy that. You're just going to duplicate your main layer, Command D, and then you'll get rid of your key light effect. You can see there's like a ton of green reflecting in all these areas, especially like right here in this foot right there. And this is actually a really complicated shot because there are just so many things happening. It took me a long time to nail this one. But if you just think about this on a smaller scale down to a one character shot and you're just having a reflection issue, you will just need to use the mask tool. Go in and create a mask around the area that's being affected. We can use tint. It's just black and white now. And then what I would do, do my best to color match the bit that we're having trouble with. We got our white and dark color, usually for the black value, it would be something close to black, but maybe more closer to this brown. So the black is set to dark brown, and then this is some shade of light brown or something like that. So maybe like, you know, that looks okay. Then press F, and then you'll get the mask feather. I'll just feather that up a little bit. Open that mask up. And the mask expansion I'll bring that down and you can see we took away that green bit and that was before being keyed out by our green screen which was making us see right through that foot in a still shot like this it doesn't matter all that much but it would matter a lot in a shot where he's moving around now I just want to give you more of a quick straightforward and uh, more nitpicky version of this we have this shot simple shot of Kylo most shots that I do on green screen are like this a lot easier it's just the character's head relatively simple it looks like we're dealing with a little bit of a dim background it's pretty evenly lit though but regardless I'll add saturation I'll bring that up a little bit I'll do key light and key that green I'm going to highlight our issues that we're having just so I can see um, I just put a gray behind him. You may not be able to see in this video, but there's a lot of artifacting in gray splotches and stuff like that. I can remedy this by just cranking the screen gain up a little bit. And honestly, the places where the green was reflecting before, right here on Kylo's helmet, that's not a huge deal because the key's working pretty cleanly. Uh, and whatever's behind him, you aren't going to be able to tell a difference. This was the final shot. So you would not be able to tell if something's reflecting through the helmet, but if you are concerned about that, duplicate our Kylo layer, get rid of our key light, 
and then I'll use a mask and then bring our tint make it as close as possible and there you go it looks pretty good right there and the last thing when it comes to like touching up something like this you can see that in the final shot it's a very shallow depth of field look that we're getting here Kylo is shot very flat. What I want to do to give that desired effect is just play with masks. So what I'm going to do to make my life easier is I'm going to compress all these layers, um, you know, make it so that my key light and hue and saturation won't change at all. And how I kind of trick the program into letting me do this is I'll do a new solid T for opacity, take the opacity away, and then select both of these layers right click and then pre-compose make a pre-composition and call that kylo now we have a kind of brand new layer that is kylo in that exact position with all the effects applied and he's just on a blank background duplicate that so i'll just do a very quick thing here i'll take the body element camera lens blur maybe three she got to take this mask transfer it to here and then change that to subtract. And then around the outside edge of Kylo, we're going to pull these in. I'm going to duplicate the Kylo layer, M for mask, then change the value to subtract. So now this is just this outer portion. Mask expansion, bring that up a little bit, just so that that bleed line isn't so stupid looking. I'll bring this one down. And then I'm gonna crank this camera lens bore up to like 10. Just realized it's taking his mask here. So I'm just gonna throw this up here. And there, this is extremely uh, over the top just to make sure you can see. Now the edges are very uh, soft and you can see how this is split up. We have Kylo's head right here. We have the body right here, and then we have the just the outer edge right there. This is very overkill for sure, but if you're going for these beauty shots, these like really close up uh, shots where the character isn't moving all that much, and you know you can accomplish this in a decent amount of time, uh, then I think it's worth it, and it really just adds an extra level of quality to the images you're looking at. But you can see keying can be from extremely difficult where you're literally meshing a bunch of different techniques, like a bunch of masking, making sure the green screen's just right in the one place, a bunch of things like that. And then you have the more simple straightforward key where the background keys very easily and you don't have too much to worry about. But if you want to go the extra mile on those more close up shots, this is a technique you can use to add an extra level of quality to your film. And there you go, I hope this video taught you a thing or two about the world of chroma keying. If you have any further questions about the topic or a suggestion for uh, the next video in this series, comment that below. See you next Saturday. On to the next one.